In this video lecture, I'm going to discuss carbon's sp3 hybridization. Uh, what happens is uh, that carbon has a total of six electrons. Now, if you write the electronic configuration of carbon, the electronic configuration is that the 1s orbital has two electrons, then the 2s orbital has a total of two electrons, the 2px, 2py, and the 2bz orbitals. 2bx has one electron, 2by has one electron, and 2bz has zero electrons. Now, this is the electronic configuration of carbon in its ground state, and this is the outer uh, shell electronic configuration. So, in the outer shell, which is going to be involved in bonding, it has uh, it has a total of four electrons. But what happens is, when an atom is bonding, electrons get pulled by different atoms in different directions. So, what happens is that this 2s orbital is not going to have two electrons in its uh, s orbital one of the electron would be promoted to the to the 2pz orbital so instead of having two electrons in the 2s orbital it's going to have just one electron whereas the 2pz is going to have one electron so now carbon has four different orbitals in its outer shell which are going to be involved in bonding uh, carbon is going to try and attract so let me rewrite this. The 2s is going to have one electron. The 2px would have one electron. And the 2by has one electron. The 2pz has one electron. This is known as octet expansion. Uh, now carbon can make more bonds. So it can now make four bonds, four orbitals. It's going to attract electrons from four different atoms trying to fill. It will try and fill those four orbitals. So four different atoms would be attracted by carbon and carbon would try and take the one electron from each of the four atoms. I've drawn carbon in the middle. It's the it's the green atom in the middle and I've drawn uh, the three p orbitals of carbon in green. So you can you can see the three p orbitals. Uh, one is the px orbital, the other one is the py. Let's call this the px orbital. This one is the is the py orbital the, the each orbital has one electron this uh, this one over here the shaded green one is the pz orbital so think of the z axis as coming out of the page and going into the page and the blue orbital over here this blue orbital over here is the 2s orbital or we can simply call it the the s orbital of the outer shell so carbon has four orbitals each orbital has one electron in it now I'm going to try and bond this atom with the hydrogen. Hydrogen has a total of one electron, which means that it only has an s orbital, which has one electron in it. So, so this hydrogen atom has only one electron in its orbital. So this hydrogen atom is going to try and attract that one electron. So, so if this hydrogen atom comes sufficiently close to carbon, what what it's going to do is it's going to try and pull carbon's electron towards it and the same would be true for so it's going to try and pull carbon's electron towards it and carbon would try and pull its electron towards it so they're both going to try to fill the outer orbitals by pulling each other's electron so so the region of electron density of maximum electron density would be somewhere in the middle because the electron from carbon would be pulled towards hydrogen and the electron from hydrogen would be pulled towards carbon. What would happen is that the electron would get stuck somewhere over here in the middle and the and the orbital from the other side would vanish because the electron is not going to the other side. So we're going to rub that side off because now that orbital has been pulled towards hydrogen because hydrogen was attracting its electron. And the same thing, the same scenario would happen with the other orbitals of carbon because they would be they would be pulled. For example, if you look at this hydrogen over here, it needs one electron. It's going to try and attract carbon's electron in one of its px orbital. And carbon would do the same. They're both going to try and pull each other's electrons. So the electrons would get stuck somewhere in the middle. Both atoms are trying to pull each other's electrons. And again, the same scenario would occur that the electron density would be found somewhere in the middle and the electron would stop going to the other side. The orbital would vanish from the other side because it's being pulled by the hydrogen from the other end. Now we are going to look at the PZ orbital in the same scenario again 
repeats hydrogen is going to try and this hydrogen over here is going to try and attract its electron and carbon would try to fill its orbital by attracting its electron the electron density would be maximum in the region somewhere in the middle of the two atoms and the electrons would stop going to the other side so this p orbital on the other side would vanish because uh, the probability of finding an electron on that side would decrease so i'm going to rub I'm going to rub that side off. So, all the electron density would move, shift towards this hydrogen atom over here. And the maximum electron density would be somewhere in the middle because both carbon and hydrogen are attracting those electrons equally. And the last carbon orbital, which, one, which was the S orbital over here, which was a spherical orbital, and the same thing repeats. This hydrogen atom would try and attract its electron and both of them, this carbon atom would try to fill its orbital with hydrogen's electrons. They're both attracting each other's electrons and the electron density would again be found, it would be maximum somewhere in the middle and the electron would stop going uh, to either orbitals. They're going to get stuck somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to rub this, I'm going to rub this uh, orbital. So now you have some idea that when carbon is bonding, all four of its orbitals, they are going to be pulled by other atoms. They're going to try and fill, each atom will try and fill its outer orbitals by pulling each other's electrons. And uh, the shape of all the, all the four orbitals that carbon had initially, uh, they were 2s, which was spherical, px was double shaped, py, pz, they were all double shaped. All the shapes are going to be changed because they're going to be four hydrogens. Uh, they're going to be bonding with four hydrogens and the, it's, uh, and the electron densities of the 2s orbital, the 2px orbital and 2py orbital and the 2pz orbital would be pulled in different directions and which would result in a formation of a sigma bond. The reason I'm calling it a sigma bond is because the electron density would be maximum uh, between the axis connecting the two nuclei. So this one is also a sigma bond. This one is also a sigma bond and this one is also a sigma bond. So carbon is going to end up forming four sigma bonds and the shape of each of the orbitals is going to change. Now I'm going to neatly redraw what carbon would look like when it's making four bonds with four different atoms. So I've redrawn the shape of a carbon molecule when it's bonding to, to, to four hydrogen atoms and you can see that the arrangement is a tetrahedral arrangement. It's going to make four sigma bonds. The electron densities of four orbitals of carbon are going to be pulled in different directions and the, and the maximum electron density would, would be found somewhere in the region between the two atoms. For example, one of the orbitals of carbon would bond with hydrogen. Another orbital of carbon is going to bond with another hydrogen. Another orbital, uh, orbital of carbon is going to bond with the third hydrogen atom and the fourth orbital of carbon is going to bond with the fourth hydrogen atom. So the electron density would be right in the middle. There are going to be four sigma bonds formed and the shape of all the uh, four orbitals is going to be a, like a simple single lobe. So there are four bonds and the shape is tetrahedral. They are tetrahedrally arranged because all these bonds are going to repel each other. So the only way they can have minimum repulsion in a three-dimensional space is if they have a have a tetrahedral shape and the angles the bond angles between uh, all these bonding orbitals is going to be 109.5 degrees and the more uh, and the most important point is that these orbitals would not be called spd or f these are sigma bonds so when carbon is bonding its orbitals are going to sh change shape and when they change shape the new orbitals of carbon they are basically basically called sp3 orbitals because they don't rep they don't re resemble an s orbital or a p orbital so the new orbitals are called sp3 orbitals so instead of having an s and a p orbital like initially when it was in its ground state when it bonds the shape of the orbital changes and Instead of having SP, SP orbitals, you have four SP3 orbitals. The, so SP3, there's, there's nothing uh, complicated about SP3. SP3 is just the name of the orbitals that are formed because they get a new shape when they are bonding because they're being attracted by the nuclei, nuclei of some other atoms. So 
So all orbitals, when they bond, they change shape. In the case of carbon, this is the shape that is uh, the, this is the shape of the carbon atom when it's bonding to four atoms.